Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 1st of October. India is says COVID-19 curbs graded restart for school cinemas from October 15. Pakistan parliament turned into puppet and rubber stem, says former Premier Nawaz Sharif. And Afghan leader Abdullah expects little change in Washington peace policy after election. And now for all the details. As part of its fifth tranche of guidelines to revive business and other activities, Indian government issued new guidelines for reopening of more activities including cinemas, schools of the COVID-19 lockdown. India's coronavirus case tally increased by 86,821 in the last 24 hours to 6.31 million by Thursday morning. India's Interior Ministry on Wednesday issued new guidelines for reopening of more activities of the COVID-19 lockdown in areas outside the containment zones. Unlock 5 guidelines come into force from Thursday and will continue till October 31. According to the guidelines, cinemas, theatres, multiplexes will be permitted to open with up to 50% of their seating capacity and states can allow gathering of more than 100 people but with conditions. Schools and colleges may also reopen in Unlock 5, but it has been left on the state governments to decide. Restrictions on international travel, except those permitted by the centre, will continue. While theatre and multiplex owners across the country welcome government's move, some are waiting for state government's guidelines. Seven months after the government has given the guidelines, the state government will give the state government what the guidelines give the state government. We are ready to open it. And for seven months, the government is giving the salary of the government. Meanwhile, India's coronavirus case tally increased by 86,821 in the last 24 hours to 6.31 million by Thursday morning. Deaths from coronavirus infections rose by 1,181 to 98,678. The number of recoveries surged to over 5.1 million, pushing the recovery rate to 83.33%. Authorities imposed emergency laws on Thursday in an Indian village barring gatherings of more than five people after protests erupted over 19-year-old girls' gang rape who belonged to the lowest rung of the country's caste system. The victim, who was allegedly attacked and raped by four men on September 14, died from her injuries on Tuesday. Authorities in Hathras in India's northern Uttar Pradesh state imposed prohibitory orders on Thursday to maintain law and order amid widespread protests over the gang rape of a 19-year-old girl in the district who succumbed to her injuries on Tuesday. The authorities have also ordered to seal the borders of Hathras district. Meanwhile, various organizations and political parties also joined the protests across the country, demanding justice for the victim who belonged to Dalit community, the lowest rung of the country's caste system, while her four attackers who are now in jail are from a higher caste. The family of the victim alleges her body was even cremated by police forcibly on Tuesday night and they were not allowed to take her home prior to the cremation. The northern state of Uttar Pradesh, which is ruled by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party, ranks as one of the most unsafe states for women in the country. In news from Pakistan, 
Pakistan's former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has said somebody else is running Pakistan's parliament and not the elected members. Sharif's remark he quoted a sentiment expressed earlier by his daughter Maryam Nawaz, who had said that political decisions should be made in the parliament, not at the general headquarters. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has said the country's parliament had been turned into a rubber stamp as he had been told that somebody else is running it instead of the elected members. The PMLN party leader made the remark on Wednesday while virtually addressing a meeting of the party's Central Executive Committee from London, where he is staying since late last year for medical treatment. He echoed a sentiment expressed earlier by his daughter and PMLN Vice President Mariam Nawaz, who had said, that political decisions should be made in the parliament, not at the general headquarters. Wednesday's meeting was called to discuss the situation arising out of the arrest of the party president, Shehbaz Sharif, and future course of action in view of the move. Pakistan's top anti-graft body, the National Accountability Bureau or NAB, arrested Shehbaz Sharif on Monday after Lahore High Court refused to extend his bail in a money laundering and assets beyond means case. He is in NAB custody for two weeks now. Nawaz Sharif is himself a convict in an Evan Field case but was granted bail in 2019 due to his deteriorating health condition. Despite repeated calls from court, he has not yet returned or appeared before any Pakistani court. Moving on, the minority Hindu community in Pakistan has lamented inaction by authorities even more than a month after a pre-partition temple was demolished by a builder mafia in Karachi. Pakistan has long been condemned internationally for discriminating against its religious minorities which is manifested in various forms. The minority Hindu community in Pakistan has lamented inaction by authorities even more than a month after a pre-partition temple was demolished by a builder in Karachi's Layari area. The temple, where reportedly a residential complex is to be built, was raised down and reduced to a pile of bricks, exploiting the situation of COVID-19 lockdown, despite assurances that the temple will not be harmed. Members of the Hindu community blamed that they were even threatened after they assembled at the site and no action has been taken so far against those responsible. Pakistan has long been condemned internationally for discriminating against its religious minorities, which is manifested in various forms, including targeted violence, abductions, curbs on practicing religion and forced conversions to Islam. Human rights defenders blame that draconian blasphemy laws are also exploited by religious extremists as well as ordinary Pakistanis to settle personal scores against minorities. In news from Afghanistan, top Afghan peace official Abdullah Abdullah has said he expects little changes in Washington's peace policy for Afghanistan after upcoming U.S. presidential election. U.S. President Donald Trump's administration this year brokered peace talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government to end years of violence and is expected to pull out its troops under a deal with the Taliban. Afghanistan's top peace official Abdullah Abdullah has said he did not expect the result Nobody of the upcoming that. U.S. It's presidential it's election to dramatically change the Afghan peace process or troop withdrawal plans for Afghanistan. U.S. President Donald Trump's administration this year brokered peace talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban to end 19 years of war and the United States is pulling out its troops under a deal with the militant group signed in February. Polls in the United States are scheduled for November 3. Based on my interactions with our U.S. colleagues, uh, with members of the Senate and Congress, as well as the current administration, uh, the policy will not change that much. It will not go to the old days that let's bring another 100,000 troops to Afghanistan and, uh, and that will be a solution. 
The remarks by the top peace official came a day after United States Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad flew to Doha, where intra-Afghan talks are underway. In news from Nepal, Nepal has issued new guidelines for foreign tourists arriving in the country for mountaineering amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The new rules include carrying COVID-19 test report, insurance of at least 5,000 US dollars and pre-booked hotel stay for seven-day quarantine. Nepal has issued new guidelines for foreign tourists arriving in the country for mountaineering, including carrying a polymerized chain reaction or PCR test report conducted not more than 72 hours ago in order to minimize possible spread of coronavirus infection. The guidelines by the Ministry of Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation state the travelers must also have a booking document for the hotel wherein they will stay at least seven days in quarantine. They may proceed for the purported activity at the end of the quarantine period only on testing negative for the disease. The visitors will also have to provide papers providing they have an insurance of at least 5,000 US dollars and the trekking or mountaineering agency must ensure travelers from Nepal against coronavirus for a sum of rupees 100,000 prior to applying for a permit. Nepal has reported a total of 77,817 COVID-19 cases with 498 deaths so far. The country resumed the mountaineering activities from 30th of July, five months after they were halted due to the coronavirus outbreak. Tourism and mountaineering are among the main sources of revenue for the Nepal government. Last year, Nepal issued a record 381 permits for Mount Everest, costing 11,000 US dollars each. The Sri Lankan government has announced that the cabinet cleared Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksa's proposal to ban cattle slaughter in the country and will now take steps to import beef. Justifying the move, the government said due to increase in cattle slaughter, the cattle resources required for traditional farming activities are not sufficient and there are not enough cattle resources to uplift the local dairy industry. Sri Lanka has banned cattle slaughter after the cabinet cleared Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa's recent proposal on banning it, the government announced on Wednesday. It is now looking at ways to start importing beef for those who consume the meat and also planning to provide it at a concessional rate. Earlier this month, Rajapaksa made a proposal to the parliamentary group of the ruling Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna or People's Front on banning cattle slaughter and obtained official sanction following cabinet approval. Justifying its move, the government has said that various parties had pointed out that the livestock resource required for traditional farming purposes is insufficient due to the rise of cattle slaughter and that was an impediment to the local dairy industry. Sri Lanka is a Buddhist majority country and most people do not consume beef as they consider cows sacred. However, minority Muslims who make up about 10% Christians and a section of Hindus consume beef. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India says COVID-19 curbs graded restart for school cinemas from October 15. Pakistan parliament turned into puppet and rubber stem, says former Premier Nawaz Sharif. And Afghan leader Abdullah expects little change in Washington peace policy after election. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.